All right, let's, uh, let's get things started. Uh, try and keep everybody on schedule. I think if you start too late, then uh, we miss lunch and bad things happen. Uh, my name is John Hallway. Uh, I'm the executive director here at the Quattrone Center for the Fair Administration of Justice. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues at the Quattrone Center, uh, who are here to my left, my colleagues at Penn Law, uh, and Dave Laban and the Association for Prosecuting Attorneys, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you here to our second annual co-hosting of the Innovations in Prosecution Symposium. Uh, the materials say this is the fifth Innovation in Prosecution Summit, but since this is only the second one we've co-hosted, I'm going with this as number two, and the first three <laughs> really didn't count. Um, talking to a room full of prosecutors about the role of prosecution is a little bit like bringing sand to the beach, but let me take a couple minutes and sort of set the stage here for what I hope uh, we're gonna do. Um, I don't think it will be any surprise to any of you that the role of the prosecutor is changing, um, that America has kind of woken up, and communities have woken up to the role of the prosecutor and its importance. Um, you know, three years ago, um, I got a call from a Penn alum, um, a woman named Ty Sticklorius, and it, Ty had gone on to L.A. and become a, an entertainment manager, and she said uh, that another Penn alum, John Legend, wanted to meet with me. And... You know, I mean, I'm a great guy, but I don't often get calls from rock stars that say that they want to meet with me. Um, so I thought about it long and hard before saying yes. Uh, and it turns out that the reason that John wanted to meet with me is that John, uh, who was a first-generation college student when he came to Penn, had gotten involved in education initiatives, uh, and in particular in education for uh, underprivileged kids that had grown up in places like his. And that had led him to the school to prison pipeline, and that had led him to mass incarceration, uh, and that had led him to the role of the prosecutor. And John was uh, one, of the, one of the people who figured out pretty early that the, that the prosecutor had an inordinate amount of influence in criminal justice policy and criminal justice reform with broad discretion, uh, the ability to influence a lot of other stakeholders, um, very little transparency and with absolute immunity, virtually no accountability. Um, and in some ways, those attributes and the added focus on the role now make the job of a prosecutor much harder. Because it used to be that the job was just to enforce the law. You could get the right guy in the right way, turn that person over to the system and let the court assign a punishment. And the role was really just keep the community safe and get justice for victims of crime. And often, at least in this city, if something did go wrong, you could simply deny it, circle the wagons, and wait for it to pass. But now, I think the expectations of prosecution, prosecutors are different and more complicated. And I think increasingly, we're asking prosecutors to be engineers of social justice. So it's not just get the right guy in the right way, though that's still part of the job. We haven't reduced the job description at all but we've added something really important to it. So now it's get the right guy in the right way and do something useful to reduce crime. So we have to now see beyond the criminal behavior and look at the underlying causes of crime. And actually, prosecutors are being expected as leaders of the law enforcement community to help engineer and design those solutions, which are not skills that we often teach in law school or that we're teaching our junior prosecutors. Um, so it, it can be a real challenge. And we're also uh, expecting prosecutors to understand the complex workings of the system uh, in ways that they might not otherwise. Um, you know, incarceration is still necessary for some people, uh, but it's increasingly viewed as a dull instrument for the job at hand. Uh, as my colleague Paul Heaton has shown in his review of pretrial detention of low-level nonviolent offenders in Houston, Often incarceration, certainly always incarceration, causes, costs millions of dollars, but often it may actually increase crime uh, in our communities. And I think we're expecting prosecutors to understand that and take new approaches to deal with that. Um, and often we overstate their ability to uh, make change in the system. And I think we'll hear a little bit about that in the Conviction Integrity Unit panel uh, when we talk about some of the things that our DA here, Larry Krasner, is trying to do in Philadelphia. Um, so it used to be that people wanted tough on crime but now what they want is personalized and utilitarian justice. And prosecutors are being forced to adjust to that because it turns out that what justice is is what the community says it is. And modifying policies and procedures and practices to deal with that new reality uh, is a challenge, for sure. But don't worry, we're the Quattrone Center and we're here to help. 
<laughs> so that's exactly why we have this symposium and why we're thrilled to partner with the Association for Prosecuting Attorneys to put this on. Uh, we spend our days working with all parts of the system, prosecutors, defense attorneys, police, courts, and other agencies, to design, implement, and evaluate novel approaches that will improve quality in the criminal justice system. We want to prevent errors in the administration of justice so that our system is more accurate, more effective, and of higher quality. And to help you think about the way you run your system, we've gathered some of the most interesting and thoughtful practitioners around the country to talk to you about what they're doing in their jurisdictions in the hopes that a lot of that will rub off on each of us and we can uh, more rapidly spread the, the implementation of these innovations. So we're looking forward to learning from you about what's working and how we get it implemented and how we can work together, both prosecutors and defense attorneys and the rest of the system, to get things done. We've got an awesome panel both today and tomorrow of speakers. Uh, we're going to start with Dan Satterberg from Seattle. We're going to have a panel uh, after that on conviction integrity units from uh, multiple jurisdictions. Um, a couple of, of, of interactions about how prosecutors and defense attorneys can work together and transcend the adversarial nature of their roles to actually help uh, do things that are useful for defendants. Because as uh, Kevin Steele, the pr prosecutor local here, uh, once reminded me, well, you know, we represent the defendant too. He's a member of the community. Uh, and so we'll talk about that. Um, we've got a couple of uh, Quattron fellows that I'm be, be thrilled to introduce uh, in the afternoon to talk about risk assessment tools. Uh, we'll hear about Oregon's treatment first model and we'll end the day with a Pennsylvania DA's Association statewide initiative to be more responsive and more thoughtful about um, how to deal with the, the substantial uh, community focus and problem of officer-involved shootings. So it's going to be a great day. Oh, and we'll end. Um, I'm a fan of South Park the movie, just to kind of dumb it down a second. Um, and I learned from South Park the movie that you get more people at a, at, a, at, a, at a session if you have punch and pie. And so at the end of this, we'll have a reception. Uh, we can enjoy some social time together, and then we'll come back for an equally interesting day tomorrow. Um, so it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, there will be coffee and snacks throughout the day uh, outside. Um, when we do get to the panels, we will be generally be asking you to write questions down as the panel go on note cards. We'll have people coming around to collect those note cards and bring them into the panelists. Uh, and uh, we are web streaming, uh, which is the other reason for doing that, to make sure that everything we're doing gets picked up by the mics. So uh, I think that's the administrative stuff. And with that, let me turn it over to the talent, uh, Dave Laban, the Executive Director of the Association for Prosecuting Attorneys. I, I certainly don't know that I'm the talent, um, yeah. but, but what I must say is if everything you just heard from John is the reason why on behalf of the Association of Prosecuting Attorneys, uh, we're so pleased to be able to be here and working with the Crotone Center. Uh, my comment was going to be that this, in fact, is the fifth Innovation Summit, um, and, and on behalf of APA, this is, you know, we've been at this for 10 years. Because I know a number of you, and, and, and thank you, looking around at the different offices, and I know I saw Kevin, there he is, I saw Kevin Steele come in, and from my vantage point down here, I, I had lost him, but he's, he's been a backbencher. Um, because, and, and then the other thing as it relates to the city of Philadelphia, last time I was here, I was at Villanova. The national championship basketball team, is it in Philly or is it in Montgomery County? No. No? Is it? Oh, Delaware County. Neither. Oh, see? My, my, my geography is no good. So um, I, was, I was thinking that uh, we've got DAs from a couple of different championship teams. So, but we don't have Delaware represented here. So I don't know, my geography is wrong again. Um, but, but you sit there and look and, and say, the offices around here and the offices throughout the country, as, as different folks have, have come on in, they're doing something. And it's not a, uh, an innovations and change, it's not something you can do quickly. And it's not easy to get elected and say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's how we're going to uh, be running the office. And I see Jan uh, nodding uh, here from, from, from Baltimore. But now, everybody seems to be running an innovations conference. I think there's been three in the last two months. So there, there it is. But, but, but the other piece that I want to say is, you're going to hear from people that not only are innovators, but have actually done something. Because uh, it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to say, here we go. This is how we do change. Uh, Justin was teasing me earlier that I keep bringing him out to talk about um, things. Justin Bingham from, from uh, Spokane. 
uh, about the failure pieces to it. Well, part of innovation is trying something, and in my world of sports, it's always better to be a has-been than it never was, is go out there and do something. If it doesn't work out, retool it, and then try again. Uh, but to sit there and try to make sure it's going to be perfect, that there's not going to be any wrinkles, that it's all going to work, and I see it not in his head, in all the things that, that Danny has done, that's not the way to innovate. You've got to take some risk, you've got to take some challenge, and then see what happens. And so I am kind of proud that it, it's, we've been at 10 years talking about the, that innovations and change need to happen. I love John's comments about the, the situation with elections, because now we've got another uh, election cycle, and so we have some more fresh faces uh, within the prosecutorial community. And that's healthy, as well as the, the uh, debates in the elections. What should prosecutors be doing, and how far do you push it? So uh, that's what I'm proud about. The first three was, was with the Department of Justice. The last two has been here because uh, of the, uh, the relationship with Quattrone Center, and that's the other piece I'm going to say. For those of you that, have, that are around for a lot of our government-sponsored stuff, you don't have coffee in front of you anymore, you don't have any muffins, there certainly is no cocktail hour, uh, or punch, I guess is, is, is what you've referred to, and pie. Um, but the, the niceties and the things of being able to get folks together, the fact we're going to have a lunch today. So if there's people across the room, and I know I've already uh, made some introductions, uh, go sit with someone you don't know for lunch, uh, shake their hand, ask them what's going on, uh, because you will absolutely learn something, and I think that's the other key. For those of you that are willing uh, to come here, get involved in things like uh, a snowstorm that's supposed to be showing up at, in any moment, um, that, that, that's, that's the piece of it, is we don't get enough opportunity to sit together and, and talk things through. And that's if we're gonna innovate and change, it is a team effort, and uh, there's tons of, of uh, folks in this room and talent that, of things that have done. With that, I do want to introduce uh, Mr. Dan Satterberg. Uh, Dan is now in his fourth term. I, I checked it out this morning. Uh, he, he had two terms, and this just shows how much um, that, that I have been able to uh, speak with Dan and, and spend some time. He is now the chair of our board of directors, uh, but the last two times he wasn't challenged. This time he was challenged, and that's something that, that, that a f number, well, a few of the elected prosecutors who really feel like they've been doing the right things for the right reasons, uh, he embraced it. Uh, both privately and publicly, he said, let's, let's have a discussion of ideas. He was challenged by one of the uh, assistant or deputy uh, public defenders. Um, from the outside, I thought it was interested that the public defender herself said, no, I'm working with Mr. Satterberg's office. I'm pretty happy with what the prosecutor's doing. And Vanessa's here from NACDL. It's, we, at the national level, try to work with our defenders as well. And I thought that was pretty interesting that head-to-head, that -head, no, I, I, I like what the prosecutor's doing. But needless to say, they went on the way for campaigns and all of the uh, pain of doing the fundraisers and shaking hands and, and doing that. And then the end of September, was it the stress of... The campaign or stress of the job that, that he was trying to get? He made him sick. So anyway, end of September, Dan's candidate decided it was too stressful. And, you know, just campaigning stressful, wait till you get the job and try to have to run an office. Um, but in any event, uh, it still was on the ballot. And I believe, and with the vote tally, because Washington, Oregon, we learned this morning, have mail-in votes. So there's no question about, is there another box of votes out there? Uh, but I, be I believe he received 72% of the vote. Um, and so we'll now be in his fourth term leading and guiding. But when I talked about somebody who not only has been thinking of what should justice look like and what should prosecutors be doing, but he's been leading his office in that direction, I'd like to introduce Dan Satterberg. Thank you. 